welcome to the 2024 tax update extravaganza. I'm Sean, a customer service representative and enrolled agent here at Aardvark Tax. And this is our yearly season ender video that will talk about upcoming changes to the tax laws that you need to be aware of before next tax season begins. We put out several videos a year, so don't forget to subscribe. Today's video is gonna be broken up into three sections. First, we're gonna have some general announcements followed by a quick discussion of this year's updates. And then finally, we're going to discuss our two presidential candidates' positions for the upcoming expiration of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So let's get started. We're gonna head on over to the wall and talk about all these things. Okay, so let's begin. First, if you're just watching this on YouTube and not as a part of an Aardvark Tax course, you're not getting credit for having watched it. So head on over to www.aardvarktax.com and order any of our 15, 20, or 30 hour courses so you get credit for watching this video with your governing agency. Next, I have a quick update on our upcoming new course. I promised you in our end of year video that we would have a new course dealing with firm security in May 2024. While we still plan on making that course available sometime this year, unfortunately, we are a little too optimistic about the May date. We're gonna announce when the new course will be available on our store page, and you can check that out anytime on our website. It should happen sometime at the end of summer. Okay, now let's get on to the fun stuff. Updates about what's going on in the tax world. So what happens when you have a do nothing Congress? Well, nothing gets done. So other than the standard inflation numbers, there's not a lot of new legislation for this year. Because our courses detail all of the inflation adjustments in that text, we're gonna skip that part of this video and instead we're just gonna talk about what's gonna be different for the 2024 tax year. First off, let's look at the due dates. When April 15th falls on a weekend or a holiday, your clients get an extra day or two to file. That's been good for the last couple years. But in 2025, April 15th falls on a standard Tuesday. So that general date means that tax returns are due on April 15th. So our extension dates fall on a standard weekday as well. So October 15th will be the date for extensions. We do have a couple of extended dates. First, June 15th, our normal ex date for expatriates falls on a Sunday, so they will be due on Monday, June 16th. And in the corporate world, March 15th falls on a Saturday, so your S-Corp and partnership returns will be due March 17th. But C-Corps will still be due on April 15th, as usual, if they file January to December fiscal years. Don't forget, W-2s need to be sent out by Friday, January 31st. As I mentioned before, Congress didn't do a lot this year, but there are a few things you need to be aware of from previous legislation that are just now coming into effect. First up, the new 1099-K reporting rules. I know, I know, we've been talking about this for three years now, but the IRS has put it off and put it off over and over again. Well, that ends this year. In the past, gig employees only had 1099-Ks reported to the IRS when they made $20,000 or more, or had 200 transactions or more. The American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 lowered that dollar amount to $600, and it was supposed to have gone into effect in 2022. But businesses complained, and the IRS listened. So for 2022 and 2023, nothing changed. But this year, the IRS has put out notice that the rule will start going into effect, but will be phased in over time. For tax year 2024, the new dollar amount will be anything over $5,000, and that will lower to the legislated amount of $600 sometime in the future. As of now, we haven't had an announcement on whether that will be 2025 or not, but there's a good chance 2025 will be the $600 amount. Or they could just phase it down again one more time. We'll let you know in our end of year video when we find out. In health premium news, the Inflation Reduction Act extended the funding for the health premium tax credit until tax year 2026, which means that your clients using the exchanges will still get the credit for tax years 2024 and 2025. As we also talked about in our end of year video, the Residential Energy Efficient Cre Property Credit was renamed to the Residential Clean Energy Credit. This is an excellent credit that folks should try to take advantage of whenever they can. This credit will phase out in 2034, but it is still worth 30% of the cost for installing efficient home products, such as solar and heat pumps. Take a look at our 2023 end of year video for more details. One change we see coming is to the clean vehicle credit. 
While the amounts and phase outs haven't changed, there are a couple of small other things that are gonna change starting in 2024. First off, car buyers will be able to transfer the credit to dealers at the point of sale uh, to directly reduce the pr purchase price of the car that they're buying. And that's very exciting for car buyers, but beware this doesn't apply to every clean fuel vehicle. Clean vehicles have MSRP uh, price limits that can affect whether they qualify for the credit, but more importantly, the credit is limited or completely reduced to zero if its battery capacity isn't high enough or if its components are mostly made in foreign countries. Check out fueleconomy.gov uh, for more details on the vehicles that qualify for some or all of the $7,500 credit. Taxpayers who have student loans still have a couple more years where any forgiveness will be tax-free. Any student loan amount forgiven before January 1st, 2026 does not have to be declared as income for federal tax purposes. Some quick notes about retirement planning. Starting in tax year 2023, the SECURE Act 2.0 raised the required distribution age to 73 years old for traditional IRAs. Roths are typically not subject to that required distribution age, and, and that's even getting better in 2024. In the past, traditional Roth savings uh, were not part of required distributions, but any Roth that was associated with a 401k was required to still uh, do the minimum distributions. Uh, that has been changed as part of the SECURE 2.0 Act, and that means that now those Roths have the same no age requirement. There was also a requirement under the SECURE 2.0 Act that high, older, highly compensated employees um, have to have their catch-up contributions be treated as if they were Roth contributions. This means someone who earned more than about, or for this year, $145,000, who wanted to put catch-up contributions into their traditional 401k would still have to pay tax on that money when it was contributed. As you can imagine, this created quite a headache for the businesses that manage 401k accounts for companies. So the IRS has now put off the enforcement of this rule until January 1st, 2026. Let's move on to business news. The bonus depreciation percentage reduction continues. As you may remember, bonus depreciation has been allowed for 100% of qualified business property that was put into place. But now we are phasing that down. The phase out begins in 2023 and we're now in the second phase. So for 2024, only 60% of the cost for qualified property is eligible for bonus depreciation, down from 80% in 2023. Moving to digital currency, businesses are getting a reprieve on reporting virtual digital assets as cash under section 6050 I of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act of 2021, businesses were supposed to start reporting transactions of digital currency if they exceeded $10,000 effective December 31st, 2023. However, the IRS has given businesses another temporary relief from such reporting, but they will have to wait for the regulations to be public because we're still waiting on hearings and things like that. The IRS will issue some kind of official statement before the end of this year. The Inflation Reduction Act also established the Corporate Minimum Alternative Tax, which imposes a minimum tax of 15% on the financial statement income of large corporations for taxable years beginning after December 31st, 2022. The CAMT is generally applicable for corporations that have an average annual financial statement income above $1 billion. Now let's talk about the upcoming time bomb. We now have this many days left before most of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act provisions expire. That means the large, large size standard deductions, the QBI, all of those things can be axed by January 1st, 2026 if Congress and the President don't act. The results of the 2024 November election will be key to understanding what will happen to the tax cuts because, as you can imagine, our political representatives have very different ideas on how to manage taxation in this country. Let's begin with what provisions are sticky and what provisions will expire. What's sticky, you ask? The corporate tax rate of 21%. That is one of the few permanent features of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, so only an act of Congress will change the corporate tax rate. 
but almost all of the other individual tax provisions are set to expire. This includes the larger standard deduction, the number of individual tax brackets, the expanded child tax credit, the qualified business income credit, and the seven-figure estate tax exemption. What will happen? Your guess is as good as mine. But here are the three most probable scenarios. The first, President Biden is elected and gets a support of Congress. In that case, the president's plan is to keep a lot of the popular provisions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, but put in some limits for those earning more than $400,000. But outside of the changes made by the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, he would also like to tax capital gains for high earners at ordinary tax rates. This would apply to those who make over $1 million a year. He also wants to tighten the rules related to estate tax and also tax unrealized capital gains uh, when folks have more than $5 million. He also wants to tax carried interest as ordinary tax rates, which would stop the majority of hedge fund managers from paying a tax on their income at capital gains rates instead of ordinary income. Finally, he would like to increase the corporate tax rate from the current 21% to 28%. All of those changes would help pay to keep the high standard deductions, QBI, and other child tax credits. The second scenario, former President Trump wins and he gets the support of Congress. As of April 2024, he hasn't really put it into any policies that he wants to change. He has just stated he wants to make the entire set of tax cuts permanent. The Tax Cuts and Job Act was limited to eight years in order to make its price tag seem smaller, so we'll have to see what policies he ten intends to introduce in order to pay for these changes once they are permanent. Now you're probably thinking, those are the only two scenarios, right? Well, nope, there's a third. And that's if one of the presidents gets elected, but one or both houses of Congress are controlled by the opposite party. In that case, all bets are off. It's likely that the more popular aspects of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act will get, at least get extended, but there's a good chance that they won't be permanent, and we may have to deal with yet another doomsday clock down, uh, down the road. And they probably won't be paid for. Unfortunately, my second site for this topic is lacking, so I'll have a much better idea of what is probably going to happen when we see each other again in our end-of-year video come November, December. If you personally have a dog in this race, make sure to get out there and vote. All right then, that concludes our update extravaganza video for this year. Don't forget to run to www.ardvarktax.com to order your continuing education course for this year. Our classes include courses for enrolled agents, AFSP program members, and of course, California and Oregon registered tax preparers. Most of our courses are available in both online and printable versions, but feel free to call us up with any questions at 877-212-1384. Got a tip that I should include in next year's end of year summary? If so, leave it in the comments. And for all of you California folks, we are going to have a separate video for you. Check out our YouTube page or you'll find it in the uh, second California hour of your tax course. That's it. Have a great rest of your May and we'll talk again soon.